YouTube. I thought I'd make a little video for you guys here on the 5.3 motor in my 2010 Yukon XL. Um, this is the 5.3 engine, as I said at the beginning of the video. I'm gonna come up with a little tutorial about how to get off the spark plug in cylinder number eight, which it's super easy to do every other one except number eight. Um, it took me about not even 20 minutes to do that side. I got those all done real quick put those in immediately and then over here was a little bit slower once I got to this one here it slowed down a little bit and then when I got to this one it was like wow what the fuck um, so at first when I tried this I was doing it through the sidewall with an 8 inch extension I took the front tire off pulled off all this um, covering stuff under here and tried it that way that didn't work very well so then I thought about it for a few days so I ran out of time the one day, it was a Sunday and I ran out of time, not a surprise. I always run out of time on Sundays. Um, so that day I got every other single spark plug done except for number eight. So then a few days later, it's Wednesday today, I finally had time after school because I didn't have a track meet and all that crap. I finally had time to come home and think about it. So my first step was take off the spark plug wire here off of the coil pack up there on top of the valve cover. So you take that off, top and bottom. This you have to take off to get to the spark plug. Never pull on this top part here. It will uh, either rip or just come right out because this is theoretically just two pieces. This metal is separate and you can see down there, there's some dialectic grease down there and all that crap, which I, it's whatever. It, people have their opinions on dialectic grease. Um, so after you take that off, what you want to do is you want to go into your toolbox <clears throat> And you want to grab a 5 ace deep well, and here I'll take everything off, off of the ratchet here for you guys. I have already put the new spark plug in. So you want this 3 ace by 1 force adapter. I'll pull them all off for you here. Right on again. So you want your socket here, you want the socket there, you want this 1 fourth by 3 ace, so this is the 1 fourth bit end. See, one fourth there. You want this on top of the three eight, on top of the five eight, sorry. So this goes in here like this. Sorry, I'm doing this one-handed with an iPhone camera. So that goes in there like this. Then you take this one fourth to three eight, and you put this, hold on, I'm putting the camera down here for a second. Put this on top like that. And then you take this here, this assembly, and you let it, you're gonna get cut up. I'm sorry guys, don't be girls about it but you're gonna get cut out by this heat shield down here and all this crap. You take this, I recommend a step ladder. I'm 6'3 and I'm still using a step ladder, so I'm not exactly a small dude. But then you come up here on your step ladder or whatever you're gonna use, you sit here, you pull it back around. You wanna get around this heat shield back here. Feel for where your plug is. Every plug is gonna be in the same damn spot. And then you simply slide this right over. This is a real struggle, one-handed. Sounds a lot easier than it actually is. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna set the camera down here for a second. Because uh, it's the fucking struggle down here to get this. I'll try to give you guys a good view here. My arm's gonna get in the way. And there you go. You can hear it's over the spark plug. And now it's sitting right there on the spark plug. So now, after that, take your ratchet. You wanna put it in whichever way you want it. So I've already put my stuff in. So I'm just gonna show you guys what I did. So see, here's your ratchet. Bring this down. Spin it around until it wants to go in. And I can't figure out which way. So spin that around until you want it to go in. Push your button in with one hand. And it'll go right in. And boom. You can start loosening or tightening it. And to put it back in, you just take to get all this assembly out, you just push the button on the ratchet. Or my stuff is kind of small. You can twist it and pull it right back out all together. Now, I do warn you. The spark plugs may fall, and you wanna be careful with that. So you wanna be very, very careful if the spark plugs fall, because you can crack them, chip them, all that crap. 
And I'm going to stick this back on here now, on camera for you guys, show you it's not that hard to do your spark plugs, and that uh, you're wasting your money having a dealership do it for you. So that's literally all it is. Stick that back on there, and this little booty back up on top of there. Check to make sure everything's on there good. Give her a good old push. Give her a tug, make sure it doesn't come off. Make sure that booty's up there really good. Make sure everything looks normal. And go ahead and give your truck a fire up. And I'll show you guys on camera, my truck does fire up. All that shit. And because, you know, haters think uh, vehicles don't fire up. I'm gonna try not to show my house here. I don't need uh, no creepy stuff. That's weird. Let's get my keys here. Try not to show you any license plate or any of that. All right, truck's on lock. Get my pitch and fire up. In the Redneck Mobile. And there you go, guys. See, truck fires up good. No misfires, none of that. No codes, just brake lights on. There you go, boys. Nice ass motor. Turn. But uh, most people don't know the rule for spark plugs, and the spark plug rule is you change them every 60,000 miles. They're good for about 60K. And another thing you guys should know with these, uh, one more thing here before I close up the video here. Another thing you guys should know with these uh, five threes in the Yukons, in the manual it recommends you run the higher octane fuels. And I ran into an, <clears throat> personally, I ran into an issue where I had a really bad lifter tick, a lifter tick slash lifter knock. And I sea foamed the living crap out of it, kept running 87. This is a Minis this is more of a Minnesota issue. So you Minnesota listeners, listen up. Um, I had the issue where I'd get a spark knock and all that fun crap, good jimber jamber. It was too much, it was, uh, it became a lot of money to spend on sea foam because sea foam spray is not that expensive. Sea foam Seam foam sprays, I think, 12 bucks a bottle. It's just really time consuming. But uh, what you wanna do is you wanna use 91 or 92. I don't remember which exactly I put in, but anything over, anything that's 91 or higher is what I use in here. It's really whatever I can find. Some stations have 92, some are 93. I have never used 93, I've just used 91 and 92. And I've had pretty good luck with that. My gas mileage is pretty good. Well, I mean, my gas mileage is crap because I had some really, really bad spark plugs in there because I have 129K on them on this truck and there hasn't been spark plugs done on it since it was brand new. So all my spark plugs were pretty shitty in here. And that probably, it also helps. For some reason, I noticed um, after I did the <coughs> the spark plug change, my truck's a lot quieter, my performance is better, of course, all that. They advertise that when you do spark plugs. But uh, that's about it, guys. I hope I helped you guys out here with a little tip on how to do that Sona number 8 spark plug. And peace out.